On average, a woman earns 77 cents to a dollar that a man earns. This adds up to a difference of more than $700,000 over a lifetime. This issue has to be addressed immediately. We took matters into our own hands and asked a variety of workers in different jobs what they thought about the wage gap. No, absolutely not. There shouldn't be a wage gap whatsoever. It should be uh, equal pay for equal work. No, I believe that women should be paid uh, equal to men, equal pay for equal work. Absolutely not. No. No, no, <laughs> no way. I think we are united in that answer. That's right. Equal pay for equal work. I don't believe there should be a wage gap between gender based solely on gender. Women in a variety of businesses face discrimination because of the idea that women are not as capable as men. We turn to Kimberly Cummings and Dr. Gloria Thomas to ask their expert opinion on this subject. It's also that, that historically women could only, you know, if they were going to work outside of the home, were only allowed to be teachers or nurses without facing very major pushback and, and repercussions. I think we see some of that still playing out um, as you know women are, are big minorities in in engineering and technology fields and face enormous backlash when they are when they are entering into those fields. She can is way down at the bottom, yes. and, yes. and it, it, at the rate that we're going and the time that it will take for us to to, to attain gender equity, it'll be 2086 before we're at mm -hmm. parity. In the past, the issue of the wage gap has been addressed by creating the Equal Pay Act, or EPA, and the Lilly Ledbetter Act. The EPA was signed over 50 years ago in 1963, and the results have been more than just a few cents. The EPA made it illegal to pay men and women working in the same place different wages for the same work. The businesses found loopholes to this bill. Even though this bill was not a complete success, it was still a step in the right direction. In 2009, Obama signed his first bill as president. That bill was the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, which allowed workers the right to ask questions about their wage in a work environment without being accused of breaking the law. People who do not agree with the Lilly Ledbetter Act and more recently the Paycheck Fairness Act suggest that these acts are being created to go against many male values. Many say that since men have to pay more in general and provide for family costs, they should earn more. Additionally, women stay at home to take care of their children because that's what the norm is, so they don't go to work as much. However, we live in a new day and age where more women have become the primary source of money for a household. Today women make up about half of our workforce and more than half of our college graduates. More women are now their family's main breadwinner than ever before. But in a lot of ways, our economy hasn't caught up to this new reality yet. On average, a woman still earns just 77 cents for every dollar a man does. And too many women face outdated workplace policies that hold them back, which in turn holds back our families and our entire economy. A woman deserves to earn equal pay for equal work. Most women who enter the workforce have more education compared to their male counterparts. In 2009, 685,000 male students graduated, but 916,000 female students graduated. Today, 45% of young women are enrolled to college compared to 38% of young men. 36% of female college students have a bachelor's or graduate's degree, while only 28% of male college students have those. If women on average have more education, how come more women are facing prejudice in the workplace? So the number that exists that can't be explained is still somewhere between 7 and 12 percent. And that's true um, according to AAUW, the American Association of University Women. That 7 percent wage gap starts out first thing a year out of college. At the workplace, most women work in jobs such as education and nursing. These jobs are nicknamed caring jobs. Jobs such as these have a larger wage gap compared to jobs in engineering and other sciences. Retirement is affected by this issue also. Women now only save $78,007 compared to men who save $121,201. Women's health care costs $294,975. So for older women to be able to pay these needs, they need more income.
The Department of Labor released new data showing that as our economy gets stronger, men's pay is going up more than twice as fast as women's. We asked people with a variety of perspective what their solution was. Everybody has a role to play. Businesses, both profit, for profit, and non-profit. I think the solution to the wage gap will be to be more aware. Yes, and do your research. Well, I believe that both elected officials, community leaders, business leaders, all have to work together to address this problem. Uh, it's important to have some legislation enacted, uh, but I think companies in general and people in general want to do the right thing and want to reward or pay people equally for equal work done. Men in businesses being aware of the impact of um, unconscious discrimination. Well, I think it's really important uh, in our own lives in the workplace uh, to ask for what we believe is a, a fair wage to advocate for ourselves. That's very important. Of what the presidential candidates could do. I think be vocal advocates for equal pay. Uh, so I would like to see them take it seriously mm -hmm. and uh, come up with solutions uh, for how we can solve this problem. So they can talk about it and say that they're in support of it and let companies know they feel it's important. Mm -hmm. The solution is not so easy, and that is exactly why it is important. There are many people in many situations that are hit hard by this wage gap. Those in lower paying jobs need the extra cents to get by. So future presidents, we look to you for a guarantee of equity. We look to you for equal pay for equal work.